Good morning, everyone. My name is Jerusalem Siba from University of Gothenburg. Uh, I'll be presenting a work on uh, learning by exporting uh, in the case of Ethiopian manufacturing sector. And this is a joint work with Mulu Gabrayesus, who is working in UNU Merit in Netherlands. So the development strategy of Ethiopian government is uh, called agricultural development led industrialization, where the government focuses on improving productivity of smallholder agriculture in the hope that industrialization will follow afterwards once these productivity improvements uh, trickle down to the industrial sector in the way of increased demand to industrial goods. The industrial development strategy of the Ethiopian government also focuses on private sector development as engine of gro growth with particular focus on labor intensive and ex export oriented sectors. And uh, the motivation of the, the selection of these sectors is motivated by mainly comparative advantage as well as uh, exports are important source of foreign currency and dependable markets for uh, value-added agricultural goods. It's also a way of setting standard in terms of having internationally competitive industrial sector in Ethiopia. Uh, there are some studies showing that exporting is associated with in, uh, output growth and also domestic industrial development. Be for these reasons, the government has uh, preferential treatment for uh, export-oriented sectors such as textile and garment, leather and agro-processing and construction, and lastly, micro and small enterprise, uh, uh, for enterprises in Ethiopia. And uh, the government has intensified uh, export promotion efforts, especially since 2005. Uh, and the nature of the export promotion evol uh, involves uh, providing direct support to export-oriented sectors uh, in terms of uh, providing economic incentives for uh, such as cheap, uh, cheap, cheaper credits and easier access to land and tax e exemption of these sectors, uh, promoting export-oriented uh, cluster development as well as uh, building uh, sub, uh, capacity building in the supply of skilled manpower to these sectors. During this period, the number of firms has increased by about 70%, as well as the number of exporters has increased by 40% since 2005, although uh, only 4% of the firms export in Ethiopia, uh, and this, uh, the total export is mainly concentrated in six major sectors that you see highlighted here. Parallel to, see, to this, we see also a shift in export destination of Ethiopian manufactured goods uh, from uh, developing countries towards uh, develop, uh, developed world. Uh, so there is a reduction in the share of export to the developed world and it's questionable whether firms, uh, the scope of learning for firms uh, is uh, limited due to this shift in uh, export destination. So the objective of this study is to investigate the effect of increased uh, export engagement on enterprise uh, performance in Ethiopia using a data set, firm level panel data set, uh, collected by the Central Statistical Agency of Ethiopia. And the data set includes uh, all uh, formal manufacturing firms employing at, le at least 10 employees. The contribution of the study is uh, twofold, we think. The first one is because we have longer panel data set, we will be able to capture any lo uh, long-term effects of in, uh, entering into the export ma uh, market and capturing uh, any long-term product, uh, production adjustment required uh, to benefit from exporting. We also, since our data set cover also the time period after the increased uh, export promotion, we, we will be able to capture any effect on the enterprise performance after uh, increased uh, export promotion by the government. So, so 
the previous two presentations has shown that uh, there are many studies uh, indicating a positive relationship uh, between exporting and in, uh, enterprise performance. But the nature of causality is debated between two competing hypotheses, which is the uh, learning by exporting and uh, self-selection into export market. Um, so I, the working mechanisms uh, of the learning by exporting uh, is through increased access to better practices in terms of technology and management. Uh, increased competition as well as economies of scale due to access to larger markets. Whereas the uh, self-selection into exporting presses that there is high entry cost to export market, mainly due to product updating and the search, uh, the search cost for new, uh, new markets and new networks. And we, we also discussed that there is a mixed result in support of either of the hypotheses. So we follow a standard approach where firms export, uh, export status is modeled as a function of lagged productivity as well as uh, previous export history and other firm, uh, firm characteristics. As Carol discussed earlier as well, a positive coefficient on productivity is considered as an evidence of self-selection into uh, export market. For the learning by exporting hypothesis, we use a firm's output as a function of uh, inputs used, as well as its export history and firm characteristics. Uh, for the current version of uh, this uh, paper, we are using a value of output, uh, but yeah, uh, I'll discuss uh, ways to improve uh, this intangling price and productivity effect later on. And a positive coefficient on the export history is uh, considered as an evidence by uh, learning from exporting. Uh, there are estimation issues discussed already involving hetero firm heterogeneity as well as endogeneity introduced due to lagged output as well as export status. We try to deal with, uh, with this by uh, way of differencing and using standard GMM approach as well as combining matching with GMM so that we compare similar firms with equal, uh, similar likelihood of entering into the export market. So preliminary uh, uh, descriptive statistics indicates that um, exporting firms do have la larger uh, productivity, labor productivity, as well as employ a larger, large inputs and they are large in size. But we need to establish causality of productivity and exporting uh, further on. So the first result involves the selection into exporting where we use a simple probit regression uh, explaining uh, the likelihood of firms entering into the export market. We see that there is high persistence in exporting uh, and also there is a positive, um, positive effect uh, of lagged labor productivity into likelihood of exporting. And uh, once the results get uh, improved, when we control for also the number of years the firms are uh, exporting, or the, the, the export experiences of firms once they enter the export market, as well as uh, some uh, size category and as well as other control variables. And results are also robust when we focus only on the uh, six ex export-oriented sectors. So there is some evidence of selection into more productive firms uh, selecting themselves into the export market. When it comes to the learning by exporting hypothesis, so we start with a baseline OLS regression where we do not control for firm heterogeneity or endogeneity of export status. We, do, uh, we find, uh, once we control for full set of control variables, we find a positive relationship between uh, export history and um, 
productivity of labor pro output of the firm. However, OLS is biased due to uh, firm specific characteristics, which we try to control for uh, using the system GMM approach, treating the firm's export history uh, as well as um, lagged output as an endogenous variable in our regression. So we also find uh, controlling for all sets of uh, firm specific characteristics, we find a positive relationship between export history and a firm's productivity as well. So focusing on the matched sample, where we try to uh, compare uh, similar firms with uh, similar uh, firm characteristics and with equal likelihood of entering into the export market, we see that there is a positive relationship between lagged exporting and uh, firm's output. And this is also, we also find that there is, the, the number of years in exporting also matters for uh, productivity. Uh, and this is also robust when, when focusing on uh, the six most export-oriented sector, sectors in our data set. So to summarize my results, yes, using a panel data set on a firm label panel data sets, we find exporters are lar large in size, use more inputs, and uh, have a higher productivity. And this positive relationship in between exporting status and productivity is both because of selection into exporting, where more productive firms self-select into exporting, and also because of learning by exporting, i.e. firms learn once they enter. Even if most productive firms are likely to export, but once they enter into the export market, they tend to learn, uh, and we see that by an increase in the level of productivity they score. So uh, as I said earlier, this is a preliminary work, and ways we are planning to improve the work include differentiating between markups and productivity of firms, uh, and also to consider the extent of participation in the export market. Currently, we just focus on whether they are exporting or not, or how long they have been exporting. So maybe the volume of export also matters for the extent of learning. I think uh, we can improve on that. We do not have information on, uh, so far, or information on destination of exports, but this is one way of um, extending the work, as we had the data, where the scope of learning depends on whether the country is exporting to a, a more developed country with advanced technology versus uh, with similar, uh, two countries with similar level of uh, advancement, technological advancement. 